lot of sucky Illinois losses in my time, but that was one of the suckiest bunch of sucks losses I've seen. Um, still hook up from the Simpsons there. I'm Jeremy Warner. He's Joey Wagner. Just brutal. Uh, just brutal. The loss we saw at, here at Memorial Stadium in Bloomington, Indiana. As Illinois makes mistake after mistake after mistake, and it looked like they might get by with a win, an ugly win, and find a way out of here thanks to the defense. But Indiana drives the field pretty easily on the last drive as, as the Illinois defense just gave up chunk play after chunk play. Indiana finds pay dirt with 22 seconds left, and Illinois loses a brutal one, 23 to 20, in a game that you think – it reminds you of Maryland. It reminds you of Purdue. These games where Illinois had a lead late in the game and just couldn't find a way to finish, Joey. This is a loss that you rue come January. You rue come December. And you really rue going into next week when you had an opportunity to build some excitement in this program, get the fan base fired up. Right now there's a lot of fans saying, why should I go buy a ticket if uh, it's the same old Illinois? Tonight felt like the same old Illinois making mistakes that just shot themselves in the foot. I wasn't all that impressed with Indiana and Illinois really should have won this game by multiple scores. Yeah. I mean, it, you kind of felt it right. Like in the game, you're like, can they really win this after a pick in the red zone down there at the eight yard line? Can they win it? I, I thought that we'll get into the fourth down call. But I thought in the moment that was right, but then they didn't get it. You're like, okay. Like all the things that they did, it's like, you don't really win games on the road doing this and, and maybe even games at home. But then Caleb Griffin hits that you go up four and you're like, Oh, maybe they're going to, because the defense, like you, you, at this point, you've got to believe in the defense. Uh, if it's too much of a body of work to not, you think, I don't know if Indiana can go the length in two minutes and no timeouts. And, and sure enough, they do. And it was, it was a gut punch. Illinois has to figure out how to take that step, how, how to get over those things. And they almost survived the, the turnovers, the penalties, the, you know, we're getting, I know we'll get into the Brian High, Hightower non call, but like, they almost survived it, but you've got to figure out how to survive. Like that is the next step for this program. And it just so happens to come on the backdrop of there's a lot in front of you in the immediate future. I know there's still 10 games, but you could have built some buzz with Virginia coming to town. And, and there's a lot that was sitting right there over the course of the next three weeks that suddenly are, are backed off a little bit. Yeah. And just big picture before we dive into the minutia of this game, uh, and break down the, the four or five turnovers that they had, the, the penalties that they had that really, really, really cost uh, them, um, you know, some, some, some bad plays all throughout this game, some questionable calls as well. But this is just a, another brutal loss in, in a Brett Bielema tenure, Joey, that I know they took strides last year, but Brett Bielema said we didn't come here to win five games because they should have won seven last year. They could have won maybe eight or something like that, right? Like, this feels so close to being a breakthrough the last year and a half, really, the last 14 games. They've lost three Big Ten games by four or fewer points. They've lost four Big Ten games by six or fewer points. They've lost how many games by, by one score, if you include the UTSA game? Like, it's just they're so close to a breakthrough, and it's just squandered opportunities to build excitement, to, to be the – Purdue the first two years of Jeff Brom to all those other kind of things. Um, that's brutal. That, that's a really brutal thing for Illinois. And those players feel it. We talked to them afterwards. And, and Brett Bielma didn't mince words. I know you're looking at the Twitter with some of the responses fans are given to, to some of the players here. Yeah, but um, this was brutal to take. And I understand if you're an Illinois fan, just being like, why can't this change? All these different things. Brett Bielma's got to figure out a way to win these games, right? He's got to find a way to punch it in when you got to get a touchdown, to, to make the stop when you got to get a defensive stop. Another one, I know, I think Ryan Walter's crew deserve better here, but it's just Brett Bielma was so close, it feels like, over these 14 games to, to potentially having eight or nine wins. And, and instead, they have five or six uh, with, with the Wyoming win. Um, so close and on a razor's edge. And too many of those have gone the other way. Some of them went Illinois' way, of course, with Penn State and all that, but too many of those have gone the other way. Yeah, I mean, it's it, – because it's – like, yes, they have, and obviously the wins and losses, like, that's that's the thing. But, like, again, we've talked about this so much with this program, Jeremy. It's like right now momentum is it's critical. It's critical on the recruiting trail. It's critical in getting people to buy into what you're building. And – you you get hung up on that like you you kind of lose some of that momentum in these these types of games like you're 
those are tough. Like they're, they're tough because I, I think even with everything, there are still maybe some people still have the belief, like they're going to get out of here and do that. And like, and then you lose that. And it just feels like the same thing over and over. Like it's, it's so hard to build momentum with some of these kind of gut punch losses. Well, let's go here. I thought Ryan Walters crew played well enough to win. Right. And, and that's been true for, for how many games here of the Brett Bielema era here. That not, not that they weren't without mistakes late in the game, uh, obviously early in the game, giving up that long touchdown after an Illinois turnover. Uh, if you take out the Brian Hightower lateral at the end, just trying to make a play, uh, Illinois had four turnovers, though, three of them in the second half uh, in Indiana territory. That just can't happen. Uh, it can't happen. And, and Barry Lonnie Jr. in the offense moved the ball. They have 448 yards today, 232 on the ground, 200 or 216 on the ground, 232. Uh, almost had Chase Brown one yard away from being the first back in Illinois history to have 200 plus yards. What a performance from him today, carrying the ball 36 times with Josh McCray out. Uh, Isaiah Williams had some good moments. Like Brian Hightower, we'll talk about that play. I thought Tommy DeVito, uh, without except for the pick and, and maybe the fourth and one, he had another option there. There were some good moments with the Illinois offense moving the ball, controlling the clock. He's going to have turnovers. You, Brett Bielema teams are not supposed to have turnovers like this. And the Luke Ford one was a, you know, a bang, bang play. But the Chase Brown one, Luke Ford missed a block. Like, that was worse, I feel like, than, than the actual fumble he had. The interception, you can't throw that ball. You can't have that mistake in, in NMA territory. Those are the plays Illinois has to get out of its system, especially when you're in Indiana territory. And then just being able to punch it in uh, late in the game. And Brett Bielma did not like mince words that he thought Barry Loney had some things to potentially learn from this game with those turnovers, with you know getting the ball in the red zone, getting it a fourth and one, because Tommy DeVito didn't have many options, either hand the ball to Chase Brown or keep it himself. And it feels like Indiana had most of those things covered. Maybe Tommy could have covered it up, but – those are huge moments in the game for all those fans wanting Brett Bielema to be aggressive. He did side on aggression today rather than being conservative. So he put it in Barry Loney's hands, but Loney's offense couldn't cash in. Yeah, Chase Brown said that's a play they run every day in practice. Indiana blew it up. And I mean, just blew it up. It was a design handoff to Chase Brown, and they, they smoked that play. And, yeah, you look up now, it's like, oh, those three points, huh? But in the moment, and I know we can get to the turnovers, but in the moment, you and I looked at each other like, yeah, your defense is playing lights out. Back them up. At, at worst, you back them up. And obviously, at worst, you have those three points wiped off. But I, you didn't hate it's that It's easy call. to say like, now. That's not the call. That's not the call that went this way. And, and frankly, Brian Hightower's play was it's the turnovers. You can't have that. You can't have some of those penalties that well, they're kind of cropping up a little bit these first two weeks. It wasn't probably at times there wasn't enough pressure. Like, there's a lot that – kind of was boiled into this but of course you have those moments that's like you push that in if you're chase brown and what was the play like that you sit there and you rue the most you know what i mean like i, I think it's i think it's the the fumbled lateral with, with chase brown and, and brett Bielma said we have to draw that play up better but to me that's you're at the 20 right and you're you're about ready to go into the end zone or at least score some points and you didn't come away with anything on that um, you know, I know Indiana didn't score off of that, I don't believe, but that one crushed you. Uh, there's so many plays that did in this game, but the fourth and one, like, I kind of don't people want them to be aggressive. At, at worst, you're setting up your defense inside the five. Indiana punted after that one. Didn't end up being the worst thing for you, except you didn't have the three points at the end of the game. That, that could have come in very handy, but if you score a touchdown on that one, it's basically a ball game with the way your defense is playing. I mean, you can go to defense too. You can say the 52 yard touchdown pass after the turnover was busted was coverage. Breaker. I mean, there were busted coverages there that those turned into three points. So like, again, like I understand there, there, are, I don't know the play. I, I don't know the one play. And I think maybe, maybe if you're a fan, that's the frustrating part. Cause there were a lot of those. That it's like, man, if that doesn't happen, this is different. If that doesn't happen, this is different. And maybe, I don't know. I, that's the frustrating part is Indiana needed all of that to win. They need all of those mistakes, the eight penalties for 81 yards. Right. Um, I thought Taylor lights. had a bad one on the hold, right? Like there were some questionable calls. Tommy DeVito didn't get, uh, get a roughing the passer call late in the game or early in the game that I, I thought he should have gotten some of those things. Brian Hightower didn't go your way. So that had to help Indiana. 
but how many mistakes Illinois made with penalties, turnovers, decisions, right? Like that ended up helping Indiana win that game. That's how many Indiana needed to win this game. Indiana was 10 of 19 on third downs, and it felt like they came at the most gut punching times. And whether it be a penalty or just that, I think uh, they like had a keeper at one point. Like those are like we've seen Illinois last year at that backstretch get off the field in those positions. And and again, like yeah, you held them out of the end zone and you didn't break, but those three, they're sitting there now. And like those are the ones. That hurts. So, yeah, you're right. Indiana needed every gift that Illinois gave them. There was a few. I mean, there, there were more than a few gifts there to, that got this done. But, man, it's – I don't know, Jeremy. That's a really good question. I don't know what the one moment was. Yeah, if you want to weigh in on that and, and type that in, like that's – I don't know what that one is. To me, I think it's the – I think it's the lateral. That, that ended up going the opposite way because you, you were cooking there. And one thing we noticed offensively, Josh McCray is out. We think this running back group is deep. When Chase Brown was off the field, this offense couldn't move. Uh, Reggie Love came in, five carries, seven yards. Chase Hayden, one carry, minus one yard. Uh, Tommy DeVito, his legs were one of the biggest positives of the day. Five first down runs for Tommy DeVito. But Chase Brown put this team on his back at times, the offense on his back. And I thought Tommy did pretty well moving the ball with, with his wide receivers. Again, again, you move the ball so well from 20 to 20. But when Chase Brown was out of the game, they didn't have that guy. And that's a position he thought they had depth at. They rode Chase. And Brett Bielema said afterwards, we can't have 36 carries. That's not sustainable. But tonight, they didn't trust anyone else. That, that's, a, that's a concern. And I thought the offensive line, given that Julian Pearl was a late scratch in this game, tried to work out before the game, uh, couldn't go. We don't know what the injury is. He had a walking boot on his right foot. He had a walking boot on his right foot. So we didn't know if that would be the case. But I thought – the offensive line was pretty good. I mean, you plowed away for 218 yards, averaged four yards a carry. I know Tommy DeVito took a couple sacks today, but some of those were long developing plays. Some of them weren't. But I thought the offensive line was, was wasn't really the problem today. You want to you want to cash in on fourth and goal, but I thought Indiana just crashed down on that play, and you didn't have many options. Yeah, I thought the offensive line settled in. I thought early there were some sacks that well, I, I think one in particular that may have only been two. I don't have it. There are three, one at the end of the game, and then two. So the one early, one early was just Tommy DeVito didn't have a lot of time. The second one, it's like, Tommy, you got to throw that football and get it out of there a little bit. But honestly, that's not even, to me, that's not a point of conversation, right? Like I, the offensive line, you saw improvements week one to week, or week zero, I suppose, to week one. And you saw those improvements without one of your two, three best offensive linemen in Julian Pearl. So that was... I mean, I'm not sitting here trying to play positive. I understand. Like, I understand that's a frustrating loss. But, like, that's – before the game, I thought, ooh, that could really – that might be a tough one there. And, and they played pretty well on that front. But critical moments, those are when you've got to cash in. Illinois was the better team. Uh, they, they, they controlled this game, right? I mean, they controlled the yardage. They controlled the clock, 36-33 to 23-27. They lost the turnover battle, 4-2. to two. Right. They did got crushed in penalties and they had a bad break with the Brian Hightower. I mean, that was a hell of a play. A well, it was a hell of a play. It looked like a catch to us, but we don't know what a catch is. It was just they didn't call it a catch on the field. If that's a catch on the field. They can't overturn it. Uh, it's, a, it's a terrible break for Illinois. And I'm sure Brett Beal may be all over the Big Ten officiating. I saw Rick Boyages is, is no longer the guy. So I don't know who he's talking to at the Big Ten. Well, probably everybody who will pick up his phone call on the three-hour bus ride back to Champaign. So that, that's a blow. But Illinois was the better team, I thought, controlled the game. But they also shot themselves in the foot so many times that they didn't deserve to win that game. And, and Brett Bielma said that after. Yeah, and I'm glad he did. And I think that probably wasn't as much a message to anybody who wasn't in that locker room. Like, he he said, it's, it's, I guess maybe to me, Jeremy, that's like one of the surprises in the sense that like you thought with a year, some of those things that they get like, especially the back half of the year, the offense got in its own way, but like they didn't really get in their own way that much. And tonight that is exactly what they did. And not just once, like, that's the thing. It's like, okay, Tommy DeVito, you could probably assume like that's going to happen. This is football. You get a fumble here. Okay. But it's just like, they, it was four or what was it, 16 to 14 or whatever for, for some time. You're like, somebody at some point's got to score. I was like, you got to score. And like, 
you got to get over the hump. Like there are times that Eleanor needed to get over the hump and they just haven't done it. And I thought Brett Bielema, Jeremy, in his post game had interesting comments when he said, we're paper thin at some positions. Like that is the first, first time. time. Yeah. That's the first time he said that. And I don't know what he was. Uh, let's, take some, let's, let's take some ganders ourselves. We were concerned about linebacker coming into this year. They kept saying they're great there. Andy Boo's always going to be positive with us. I don't think CJ Hart had a tackle today. Isaac Darcy Angel had six. Tariq Barnes had a phenomenal play on an option. That's a position of concern. One of our concerns on defense were two of the unknown veterans that have been here a long time, haven't made a big impact. We're wondering, can they take the next step? Kendall Smith had a really tough first half, really tough first half. Um, had the interception. That was thanks to an Indiana player tipping it in the air and not, instead of catching it. But he probably should have had one, I think, two drives later, maybe even the next drive. And, like, you, you watch it. We saw Kirby Joseph on the sideline. You think, you know, he probably comes down with that second one. The, the guy standing over there who plays for the Lions. Now. So that's a big question mark. I think moving forward, you and I came into the season thinking, is Kendall going to be that guy? Or are they going to have to find somebody different like Kirby last year for Derek Smith? Uh, later on in the season, that's question mark moving forward. Ezekiel Holmes and Seth Coleman, uh, not much of an impact quite yet on, on this season. And that's a position I think they felt good about going in. Gabe Ackes is coming in on third downs and being the pass rusher. They need more from Seth Coleman. They need more from Ezekiel Holmes. So those are positions that you're starting to feel like, I don't think outside linebackers pay for thin, but they need better production there. Uh, and defensive line, Johnny Newton was amazing tonight. He's a game wrecker. He's just, he's an all Big Ten player. He's a, he's a pro. I thought Keith Randolph had good moments, but Jamal Woods gets hurt, and all of a sudden that depth looks a little paper thin, and those guys had to play a lot of reps in this game. So um, those are some concerns, and to be honest with you, running back felt a little paper thin tonight because you couldn't go to anyone other than Chase Brown, it felt like. Yeah, that's exactly right, and we didn't see Aiden Lawford. Again, I'm not saying that changed, but like I thought we would a lot. I mean, he be, said we would. He said we would. We did not see him. So I, I agree. That, and, and I think when he says paper thin, I, I, my read is, well, what's the other option here, right? Like, well, if we're not getting the production we desire at certain positions, there's certain positions that that other production doesn't really, maybe doesn't exist. That's my read from it. Brett Bielema didn't say that. But when you say paper thin, there's only a few ways you can really uh, pull out what, what you think he means there. I think, Jeremy, I'm glad you mentioned Gabe Ackes. That train's coming. Like, I, what the Alex most Brian had a quarterback hit today. Like, those guys at least are starting to show some flashes being able to like, get to the quarterback. I expected a lot more out of Seth Coleman. I don't know if I expected a ton more out of Ezekiel Holmes, but they need more production there. This wouldn't shock me if today was kind of the Virginia moment or after Virginia next week. Is that going to be it at the bye week? We have to make some personnel changes. That, that's what I'm looking for is what, what does this – are there going to be some tweaks, snap tweaks, number tweaks? Sure. Like, I'm sure you'll see that against Virginia. To me, circle Chattanooga. Like, what does this team look like coming out of a bye week against Chattanooga? Or to be, to be fair, you, you can probably experiment a little bit more, try to ease in guys to some reps there. Like, that's – if there's changes, that to me – Remember, they changed Alex Palczewski and Julian Pearl after a bye week last year going into Penn State. Like, there's there's time to kind of work it there if that's what's going to happen. But I, I don't know, man. I, I think there are still some question marks that that do need to be answered. And, I, look, we didn't learn a lot last week. Like, this is the most information we can take out of these first two weeks because they were tested. And there's still a lot of growing to do. Yeah, I, I kind of would just go into, like, what have we learned? We've learned – Chase Brown is really freaking good. Um, Tommy DeVito, I think, is an upgrade. I, I do. I think he's an upgrade because he can run the ball. I think he's pretty efficient, makes pretty good decisions. Some accuracy comes and goes. That happens. Uh, I thought the other quarterback today was far less accurate, even though he threw for 330 yards and, and led that huge drive towards the end of the game. Um, I thought Tommy managed everything pretty well today, and except for maybe some fourth ones, accuracy, um, you know, there was maybe a couple decisions where he put the ball in harm's way, but not too many of them. Isaiah Williams got really involved today, had a couple drops that were costly, but still nine catches for 112 yards and a touchdown. Hightower and Bryant each get 43 yards. So you feel those guys are, are coming on a little bit. Um, I think the defensive front was fantastic for most of the night. Uh, Indiana had 32 rushing yards on 26 attempts. 
I can't. I, I the PFF numbers. I'm really looking forward to see how many pressures Illinois got because they didn't get any sacks, but they did get some pressure, especially on the interior with guys like Randolph and Newton. Um, but yeah, I, I think we've learned that. But we've also learned some of the guys they were counting on to step up haven't quite done it yet. Yeah, I think uh, the the interior of the defensive line I think is getting some pressure. You got to get pressure on the edge. I mean that's edge rushers can wreck games. You see, I mean, literally at every single level, you see, you got to get more. I thought Gabe Ack has had those moments, but. And I thought um, Brian Walters brought a lot of pressure via blitzing. They, they were pretty aggressive at that time. They were, yeah. And, but yeah, man, like you need those steps from some of those guys that you thought you were going to get uh, steps up from, because if not, the depth you, you thought maybe you could skate by with becomes a lot. Maybe that ice breaks at some position a little bit. So it's, I, I'm interested to see what they do next week in terms of how those rotations look. But yeah, I, Isaiah Williams copped up to it. He said, I got to come up with those catches. Like if Isaiah Williams wants to be who he wants to be and who they think he can be, you've got to have those catches. He probably left 22, 23, four yards out there on some of those catches. And you, you could even put another one down the sideline on the first drive of the game that was right out of his. I got to come up with that if you're going to be who you think you're going to be and who you can be. So, again, I mean, I don't know, man. <laughs> so those are the plays. Those are the plays that, that absolutely kill you. As for that last drive by Indiana, uh, I talked with Sidney Brown after the game. He did say, like, we can't be – we can't have butterflies there. We can't be different than what we were all game. He's basically saying, like, they were playing different. I don't think it was a complete prevent there. Uh, it just felt like – Brett Bielma said it afterwards. Our guys needed to be more aggressive – Felt like they lost their leverage and what they were supposed to do. Just felt like the moment was, after all of that great play by the defense, the moment just got too big for them. And it felt like Purdue last year, felt like Maryland last year, where the defense kept making stop after stop, and they deserved to win that game, but they needed one more, and, and they couldn't get it. I'll tell you, there were a couple. I was down in the end zone, Jeremy. I know you were up in the press box. There were a couple of plays where I thought they might get to it. Like I, I thought some pressure was coming in, and that pocket got smaller, and you thought – is that going to be the moment where, where it's like you get him and, and that's it? And like, the, I still, you asked what the moment they, I still think they're looking for the moment to turn. Like, and, and we thought Penn state was a year ago and it didn't like, what is going to be soda felt like it too. Right? What, what is going to be the moment that it turns? And I think that's what they're still looking for. Yeah. It's just brutal. It's brutal talking to these guys after the game, but I, I just think it's brutal for Illinois trying to, to, to build momentum here. Um, I thought if you got to 2-0, and you go home with Virginia, great crowd, fired up, ready to go 3-0, and which probably means you're going 4-0 and with Chattanooga there. Now you got to go win that Virginia game. Now, now you got to go, you know, I thought 3-1, and no matter how you get it, you always thought you could lose this game. It's, it's a Big Ten game against an Indiana program that's better than it was last year. I don't think it's a great program. Um, but neither are you, obviously. So you needed to kind of try and win this one. Now you got to go steal one elsewhere going to be an underdog to Virginia, probably touchdown, something like that, 10 points or something like that. Got to find a way to, to surprise, and then you got to learn from this and find a way to not be in those situations again, whether it's Isaiah Williams making that catch or, or Luke Ford making a play or Barry Loney with his play call or the defense getting that stop, even though they've been asked to get stop after stop. It's just that one more play, that one less penalty, that one less turnover. Yeah, I – Fred Bielema said, you know, he said, we're going to have to lean into the relationships our coaches have with these guys, which to me, Red, there's going to be some conversation in the next, uh, tomorrow's Saturday, today. Saturday's an off day, but it sounds like there's going to be some conversations. And, and I don't think that's just coach to player. I think that's coach to coach. And, and like, this, you just got to, something's got to flip. And like, you do have to remember this is Brett Bielema's 14th game at Illinois. And he didn't take over a program exactly in good standing, but he's shown enough that, like, the, the light switch is there to be turned on. Like, that's the thing. It's not it's not like you see this team get gutted every week like you had in the past. Like, the lights, it, it's right there. Like, you, the, the pieces are in place. They've just got to do it. I, I don't know what that looks like or when it happens. Or I guess more importantly with this program, how do you sustain that? Because they the light switch kind of went on last year and they didn't sustain it. you got to figure out how to build on some of those moments. Well, you found a way to be competitive last year, win a couple close games, lose a couple heartbreakers. You felt like this could have been one to, hey, we made mistakes, but we find a way to get through it. No, it's just another brutal close one. You don't want that to become the thing of what you are. You're competitive. Hey, you're competitive. 
Well, year two, you want to win those games, right? Like that's what you want to take a step forward with this year. This team obviously has some deficiencies that we've seen, but they looked like the better team again. Like, and they found a way to lose. You got to stop finding ways to lose games like this. In year one of a rebuild, which is what this is, hey, Illinois is a tough out is a great compliment from an opposing coach. In year two, you don't want to be a tough out anymore. And in year three, you sure as heck don't. And, and Brett Bielema in his career really hasn't been a tough out. Like, that's not a compliment that he's been a good, he's had good teams. Like you don't want to be a tough out anymore. You want to be a team that goes on the road against a team that you probably are better than or you play better than and close the door. Like that's that's how you get that out. Like being a tough out is not a, that's not a, hey, that's really nice of you to say. Like that's a, well, we're done with that. Like that's, and, and that's, how does it get there? Well, Illinois has got two games under its belt before Virginia even plays here in what, a couple hours from what we're doing. I would expect Virginia to be 1-0 uh, with a pretty easy win against Richmond tomorrow. Uh, that's a dynamic passing offense. They lose a lot of offensive linemen, but Brendan Armstrong's back. Three of their top wide receivers are back. Uh, a different coaching staff, all of that. But Illinois has got to regroup, find another way to win, be, find another way to bounce back because, Joey, this team hasn't won back-to-back -back games under Brett Bioma. Like, you can come away with a 38-6 win after, over Wyoming, who I think is terrible. doesn't mean anything the next week. you got to find a way uh, to kind of stack these victories, stack days, as, as Brett Bielma says. Any final thoughts from Indiana? Yeah, I just I, I don't like the term must win on September 3rd, I guess it is now, because I think that's just it, – it's dramatic, and it, it's, it's not meant in honesty. It's meant in a gut instinct but, or gut reflex. But you look at what could be a week from now, eight days from now. You dreamed of three and oh, you dreamed of two, not even dream, but two and one. You're like, oh, all right, if you're Illinois, you, you're suddenly looking down the barrel, potentially one and two. And like, that's where that's, that's tough to go one and two when you kind of felt like you thought you were building a little bit of momentum. Like, so I, I don't, again, I don't like must win, but there are some implications with Virginia coming to town in terms of perception, in terms of your own forward momentum it doesn't forego anything that's going to happen in the next nine but it, there's a there's a big chance to kind of turn this ship a little bit and and turn this page or you could be looking at one or two and that, that's a tough one you and i cover recruiting man it's important to find that and tonight was just a missed opportunity for that we'll see how they bounce back next week against virginia for joey wagner i'm jeremy warner thank you as always for listening to the illini inquirer podcast sorry for the snafu on the youtube live there was some issue with time zones on my computer and what we're actually at uh, in indiana so we'll try and do the live post game podcast next week at virginia and moving forward we have a lot of fun with those so sorry about that we'll try to get that corrected for next week but for Joy Wagner, I'm Jeremy Warner. Thank you for listening to the Illini Enquirer podcast. Don't forget, if you want to be a VIP member at Illini Enquirer, now is the time to sign up. 75% off. That's more than $80 of savings. You get all of our VIP analysis that we'll have. I can't wait to talk to Jay Lehman. Uh, I can wait to, to watch the film, but I will break down that film in our film room breakdown. As always, Derek Piper's got Illinois basketball recruiting covered. We got Illinois football recruiting covered. So sign up now at Illini Enquirer for an annual VIP membership. It's the best deal of the year. So act now there. Follow us wherever you get your podcasts at Illini Enquirer. Uh, give us a rating review wherever you get your podcasts as well. And check us out on YouTube. Smash that like button. Subscribe to us. We appreciate that. All right, we'll talk to you next time. Everybody have a great day. Take care of each other. We'll talk to you next time on the Illini Enquirer podcast.